Welcome everybody. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this course before we move on here. So what do you need for this course? Well, you need the paid version of Construct 2 and as you can see here, uh, you can go and download uh, Construct 2. Uh, you can use the free version, however, there's a few things that are not in the free version like families, which just make things a little bit easier. All right, so uh, Construct 2 is a really good program. It is amazing. It is so good. It is the game engine I've always wanted, and um, I'm a big supporter of it. So uh, you have to go and download that. It does take the, um, it is the, the paid version, but you will make games so easily. Uh, when it says create games easily, that's not uh, at all. Um, a, a lie there. It is actually true. After making games, uh, you know, by pulling up a text file and coding in C++ back in the 90s, this is so awesome and I highly recommend that you use it. The other thing that we're going to be using is a Photoshop here. Now, I am using the, I have the Creative Cloud here. Now, you don't necessarily have to use the Creative Cloud, but I am using the paid version of Photoshop here. So you, uh, so I don't think there's anything that there is is too much. Uh, it's essentially very, uh, very basic work in Photoshop. Uh, but I do use Photoshop, and I highly recommend that if you do, uh, if you do or are, are into graphic design, that you do get the Creative Cloud, and learn how to use those uh, programs there. Once you know how to use those programs, you can actually make quite a bit of money as a freelancer. And, you know, a few gigs here and there will totally pay for the, uh, the license there. So keep in mind that there is both, uh, you do have to use that content there, okay? Uh, and if you're taking this course, it should be within the course requirements. So, uh, so there is that. If it isn't, you can always email me at johnburra at mammothinteractive.com if you somehow buy this course and it didn't tell you that uh, the, the paid versions uh, you needed the paid version so that so we can quickly uh, rectify that. But let's get on to the course here. Now the whole point of this course is for you to build games here. Now I've spent a lot of time reverse engineering a lot of the top um, the top games in the App Store, uh, and I also wanted to make sure that the games that you know do make uh, a lot of money and get a lot of downloads like in the you know hundreds of thousands to millions of downloads uh, that are easy to make now there are certain games that are really big that are incredibly difficult to make but the app store has a lot of games that are really easy to make and I have made those I've reverse engineered a lot of what uh, has happened in the App Store, and I'm showing that to you. Now, one of the biggest and most common misconceptions is that good art equals a good game. This is not necessarily an art-related course. This is a game mechanic-related course, and again, going back to the, uh, when it comes to the apps that have made a lot of money, I have there's actually a lot of apps that have very simple art, very minimalist art. And you can go and download these too. You can see them on the App Store and you can see how many uh, downloads these apps get. They have uh, simple blocks and simple colors, but they're fun to play. And this is something that you need to understand as a game developer, is that you need to understand that just because something looks good doesn't mean it is good, and you should always focus on game mechanics. Now, if you're of the artistic type, that's great. Focus on game mechanics first, then focus on art. Games are about the mechanics of of the uh, of the game more so than it is about the art. Now there are a few games that are about art, and those games are 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 pretty good. But I highly recommend just working on the mechanics. So to sum up, this course is going to be about mechanics, and it's not going to be. Uh, about uh, art here. I am going to show you how to make like uh, simple art here and we do use and we do make art within Photoshop. It, it's just that the art um, to make high fidelity art that does take quite a bit of time. So uh, keep in mind that these are simple and that I've been uh, I've been taking all of what's been profitable in the App Store and putting it and showing you how to do that here. Okay, so how do you use this course? Well, the better question would be, how do you become good at something? Okay, that's a really broad question, but it is something that 
should be answered. And if you've never asked that of yourself, you should totally, uh, you should totally uh, think about that often. How does one become good at developing games or developing software or 3D design or graphic design, whatever? Well, there's different avenues, but one of my favorite and I found to be most successful is that the more you do, the better you get. Okay, And this could be something like if you draw, let's say, five dogs in Photoshop, you're probably going to be better at drawing dogs if you draw five than if you draw one. You're probably going to be better at drawing dogs if you draw 20 versus if you draw one. So this course is built upon that principle that the more games that you make, the better you get. And the cool thing about this, this course here is that I show you how to make games with different mechanics. And th some of the mechanics are similar between games and some of them are quite different. And you can take these mechanics and you can take these ideas and make your own games. And that's exactly what you need to do with this course. So after you finish a, a game, you want to make two or three other small games like the game that I just showed you that are slightly different. And I guarantee you that if you do that, you will be better at making games than if you were not to do that. Okay, So it's this idea that practice makes perfect. Think about an athlete or a musician or something like that. Uh, if, you think of, if you think about game development and production in your career, again thinking broadly like that, like an athlete or a musician, then you will, uh, you will probably be better off. Think about, uh, you know, if you were back to kids and you had that one person that would always shoot basketball hoops. You know, it would be 11 o'clock at night, the neighbors are yelling at, at you, and you're still shooting basketball hoops. Well, chances are that the, the kid that's going to shoot hoops all night long is going to be better than the kid who doesn't, right? It's just practice. Okay. Now, once you get into this, there's a, you have to think about efficiency of practice, but for most people, they're not there. They're not there at the efficiency level yet. They're there at the, the level where they need to, to learn as much as you can. So it's, if you build a bunch of games, you'll get better at it. And if you build a bunch of, let's say, menu screens, you know, it's actually a very important part of a game, even though you probably don't think about it, you'll get better at it. So that's how you have to use this course. You have to take the ideas and kind of expand upon them and build lots. And all the courses that I make at mammothinteractive.com are like that. Whereas if you build 20 apps instead of one, you're going to be better at building the 20 apps, even if some of those apps are, are somewhat similar. Okay. Even if an app, even if your game is maybe 20 or 30 percent different from the game that I showed you, you're still learning. Okay. Now another thing that pretty much is never talked about, ever, ever talked about, when it comes to pr production, is the physical connection between you and the computer. Okay. Now if we were to use a musician example, right? When you play piano you have to, there's a physical part, a component to playing piano. And piano players know this. They say, well, I am not dexterous enough in my fingers to play these chords, so I'm going to stretch them out. Okay. Now, in computers, it's not exactly the same thing. It's less than, let's say, a musician, but it's fairly similar. And piano playing is probably the closest. Okay, because you have to type things in, you have to use the mouse, and it's a very physical connection. Now, when you get into um, to building games, if you want to build them fast, there is muscle memory there. There is muscle memory that you need to be able to understand here. And if you've ever watched a, a very good uh, person make or code something, it seems like second nature to them. In the same way, for example, let's say a hockey player is second nature for them to kind of just zip up the ice and shoot and score. Now, that's what I'm trying to teach you in this course, and that's what I am going to teach you how to do, is to be effortless within the code, okay? within the software environment, and that's the whole point. And it's through an iterative process 
which you can go and expand upon is is really the key to to really becoming good at um, at construct two or anything. I know this is a construct two course, but it doesn't matter what you want to want to get good at. Is you know practice does make perfect. All right, and the last thing about this. Um, uh, about the format of the course is generally I like to have shorter tutorials. However, in this course, I've expanded them a bit because I want to fit more into the course here. But the core, uh, but the the tutorials should be fairly short, less than ten minutes. And the reason is I like to comp car compartmentalize the uh, the information. Right? And I've had this happen, and all my students have told me that they love the short tutorials that I that I give here. Okay, so. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about um, how to um, on how to um, use Construct 2 and what you're going to need to finish up the course. See you in the next tutorial.